this is the next episode of what's new in SwiftUI series. In this video, I will be talking about the new cage view in SwiftUI. Cage view lets you present data just like a typical progress bar, and it comes with the different shapes and sizes. A couple of videos ago, I created a tutorial on how to create a custom progress bar. In this video, you will see that this new cage view can be a good alternative to that kind of views. Let's get started. Okay, let's start with the documentation. Uh, the cage view is basically a view that shows a value within a range. And by default, it is from zero to, as you can see, to 100%. This is the, the basic view. And the gauge view is available since the watchOS uh, 7.0. And it has been recently added to iOS 16, iPadOS, and also to the latest macOS. So it is kind of new for the iOS, but it has been here for the watchOS. And as you can see also, the sample is provided for the watchOS. Okay, so let's jump into the Xcode and let's create a sample gauge view. Okay, let's add a spacer here so it will go on top and let's zoom this a little bit so it will be like more visible. So yeah, we have a basic gauge view with 0.5, so it's like in the middle, like 50%. And the text here, as you can see, is being displayed on top of the gauge view. So this is like a very basic gauge view. Let's add a value, like the state here. And let, let's use it here. So it is zero right now. And during the on up here, uh, let's add a loop that will just iterate from like zero to 100. So we'll see a little animation on how this is actually loading in this case. And let's add a sleep here. So it will not be that instant. Don't forget to divide it by 100. So we'll have this in percentage because it's from zero to one. And yeah, as you can see, it is changing the value. We could also wrap this with the animation so it will look uh, a little smoother. So this gauge view basically <laughs> looks like a, a progress view. So yeah, let's add the progress view and see what's the actual difference. So this uh, gauge view looks really similar to a progress view. By default, this gauge looks like a linear progress, but we can change this with the gauge style. Let's add a gauge style to this one. So that's the default one, the one that we already saw. Let's change this maybe to this one, to the circular. As you can see, the space here is really limited. It's not, this one does not fit. But yeah, don't worry about this. We'll, we can also like change this. Let's add the tint color to this one. So it will be the same as our progress view. Also, the animation here is broken, so let's disable this. Yeah, that's much better. Here are also available uh, different versions, like, like this one. As you can see, now it fits. The accessory linear capacity. This looks like almost the same as the, the progress view. Accessory linear. Okay, so those are all of the different gauge styles. We can also add the minimum and maximum values to the gauge because right now we only have this from like from zero to 100, so from zero to one. But if, for example, you have a different variable and you have different values, you can just set the gauge style to be like the minimum value, let's say like 50 to like 200 or whatever value you have. 
So let's add this one here. And this one is like the range. So let's say we we'll make 50 to 100 or 200, let's say. Now we can add the current value label. The minimum value label. So here it will be 50. And the maximum value label. We still divide this loading by 100, so let's remove this. Okay, let's also update this loop. So we will start from, let's say, 50 up to 150. So as you saw, we start from 50 and we are going to up to 150. And the scale is from 50 to 200. Actually, in this view, we don't see the minimum and the maximum value. So let's change change this. Accessory linear capacity. We see the minimum value here, the minimum label, the maximum label, and the current label. This one, and this one like the, on top, the title of this gauge. Let's change this one. Uh, yeah, the accessory circle. As you can see, there's not that much space here. Unfortunately, we cannot change the width or height of the of the view, so we can add the scale effect for it. But this is yeah, as you can see. But this is not the the way to go. As you can see, it is all pixelated because we are just scaling this up and down. So yeah, that's really not a solution here. Maybe we can change the, the font size here so it will fit a little, a little better. Yeah, that's better. Let's apply it to this one. Yeah, now that this one fits. We can also change the tint and add the gradient here so it will more look like, uh, for example, like uh, a thermometer or like the, the gauge with the temperature. Yeah, that looks much better. And what is weird with the gauge view is that the accessibility or like the dynamic type is ignored all the way. As you can see, I'm switching this to the smallest one, the XS. It is the same. When you will change it to the bigger one, it is still the same. As you can see, the progress view is changing, but the gauge view is, is basically still the same. Nothing is changing here. That's really, really bad. I think that maybe that's because uh, it was introduced to to the Apple Watch, so that's why. But because of this, I think it, it is like a heavily limited. That's all what I have for you today. As you just saw, this new gauge view is really simple. There is not that many configuration options. When I started tinkering with it, I just hope that there will be more configurations available and you will be able to customize it as you like. Well, looks like I still have to create my own custom progress bar. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Yo.